Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today's one is a viewer request. They've asked to remain anonymous and once you hear this request, well, you'll know why. So, can you game on the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter was the question put forward. So, the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. In fact, let me read you the description from Microsoft themselves. The Microsoft Basic Display Adapter is software that's built into Windows that provides display and graphics capabilities when software from your hardware manufacturer isn't installed. It basically lets you see an image on your monitor so that you can navigate to your respective graphics card vendor's website and install the appropriate drivers. It's sort of like a middleman, if you will, that allows you to obtain your graphics card drivers so that you can run your games properly. The Microsoft Basic Display Adapter itself, well, it isn't intended to be gamed on, but I've been asked to do this anyway, so I suppose we should get into it. Now I'm using the Ryzen 5 1600 AF version, the new version of the chip, along with my Radeon 5700 XT, which is sort of pointless to mention because it's in the system but the drivers have not been installed. This is a very silly video, feel free to stop watching, but uh, for those of you who want to come along on this bumpy ride, well, I suppose we better get into it. <laughs> so I thought we'd start off easy. Let's see if Fallout 3 here will run on the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. I'll try New Vegas afterwards as well, just in case we have no such luck here. I'm going to set everything to the lowest settings with the lowest 1024 by 768 resolution at 43 aspect ratio. I'm just going to make sure everything, including the texture settings, are at low here to give us the best chance of running this game with the basic display adapter, though. I'm assuming that we are going to see terrible performance throughout. So the game launches, which is a good start, and I apologise for the stretched image here. I've stretched the resolution to full screen just for the sake of this 1080p video, but let's continue where we last left off. Okay, is the game loading or crashing? And it's crashed. Alright, so we'll try Fallout New Vegas next. So to be honest, I would expect similar results. This is a game that runs on the exact same engine after all. We won't really bother actually changing the graphics settings because if the game isn't going to run, then there's no point in messing around with the settings. But just like Fallout 3, we can get into the game itself here. But whether or not we can actually play the game is a different story. So let's just continue where we left off, somewhere in Good Springs, I would assume. Once again, we get to the loading stage and the game, oh, is it loading or crashing? Here we go, and it's crashed. No such luck with Fallout titles. Okay, so let's try GTA 3, we can click play. Oh, but the game just stops. Maybe that was just a one-off occurrence. Let's just try and click play again. Sometimes Steam does that anyway, so let's click play and hopefully we can jump into the game i guess not all right moving on we'll, we'll install another gta and see if it runs any better than this one in the meantime though we'll try my disc based copy of the elder scrolls oblivion perhaps we'll have a little more luck here i'm just going to set everything to low again and after waiting a while for everything to load as you can see here we are in the game Thanks for loading me in the water, I forgot that I had saved here. Now one thing you will notice if you can actually get a game running um, is the high CPU usage simply due to the fact that the GPU drivers aren't installed. The CPU takes a hammering, even the Ryzen 5 here. Normally this would be at about maybe less than 10% usage, don't quote me on that, but yeah, as you can see it's taking the full force of the game here. It looks absolutely awful at the very low settings. I think I remember playing it like this a few years ago with my integrated graphics solution, but to my surprise, we are running Oblivion with at least 30 FPS on the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter as we explore this little town here. Okay, <laughs> if you take a look at the graphics in the background here, everything is looking pretty atrocious. The CPU is maxing out, so to speak, on occasions. And yeah, it's an overall despicable experience. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna admit it. Okay, we are getting at least 30 FPS, but I didn't bother with the 1% and 0.1% lows here because no one should ever do this. There is no real reason to. 
you should always install your graphics card driver. Even if it's integrated graphics, just install the drivers. CSGO is a no-go. Unfortunately, it will inform us that we do not have the graphics power required to run the game, so I thought that I would try Half-Life 2 instead. Another older title, but one that still looks pretty graphically impressive, even in 2020. The physics in this game are still pretty cool, they're fun to mess around with, and I'm just glad to see that the title is running. I mean, we're running with at least 30 FPS, 60 FPS on some occasions. This is at full HD, 1080p resolution, so we are taking quite the beating as far as our frame rate is concerned in some instances, but overall, it's really not too bad. Okay, so it seems this root canal level is even more demanding. Um, I think I'm going to drop the resolution. Let's try the lowest we can set it to with the HDMI cable attached here. 1024 by 768 And yeah, 60 FPS. What a nice improvement. If you want to run Half-Life 2 on the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, be sure to use 720p or lower is all I can say. But it's going to be a pretty interesting experience to say the least. Alright, so let's try out Metro 2033 Redux. Here we are at the main menu, and if this isn't a telltale sign of what's about to occur, then I don't know what is. If we jump into the graphics menu quickly, I'll make sure to set things to 1024 by 768 not that it will really make much of a difference, I'm sure. And we'll also turn everything else down to low or off. Right, let's try and navigate our way into the game now without any freezes or crashes. I think we'll just load from where we last left off. And here we are. Now, it did take quite the while to load, as expected, but once we're in the game, you can expect around 5 FPS, I would say. The CPU usage, once again, going through the roof here. Look at that VRAM usage, 9 megabytes. <laughs> oh, wow. 3 FPS now that we're outside. 2 FPS, in fact. I hate to see what's going to occur when the action starts heating up, so I think we'll leave this one right here. But now it's time for the one, the only, Crisis. Once again, 1024x768, I think we'll actually set the anti-aliasing off um, and turn everything down to low. I'm going to load my last save game here, which is probably not a good idea. As I seem to recall, I saved in a fairly awkward place. Yeah, as expected, here we are. The enemy comes around the corner just as I spawn into the game, and with 6 FPS, I really can't do much. 5 FPS, 4 FPS, 6 FPS. Okay, it's not doing too bad. I reckon 5 on average. Um, I say not too bad, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Despite the PowerPoint presentation style gameplay, we managed to dispatch of those two fairly quickly. As you can see, though, Crisis certainly isn't looking its best. Assassin's Creed Black Flag... This is about as far as you can get. The in-game graphics menu will load. It will take about two years. And once you're there, you can't really adjust any settings because the game is so laggy that it just does not want to play ball. So, yeah, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, unplayable. Much like most other games, actually, so far. Dirt Rally 2.0, though, well, you know I like to run this game on a lot of hardware because it's fairly easy to do so and even here we can expect two frames per second from our basic display adapter what an absolute beast here we are running this very good looking direct x 11 title and uh it's running without a hitch of course it isn't it's running terribly <laughs> but what can you expect i hope that the anonymous user who asked the question is satisfied by what they've seen today but just in case they're not we're going to jump into another older title now another gta title this is grand theft auto vice city right so we might as well jump into the options menu first of all the msi afterburner overlay is taking up most of the screen but we won't play around too much with the settings let's see if we can run it at 1080p though that'll be interesting so let's jump right into the game now we'll start a new game as i apparently don't have any saved games here and as we start the game you'll see that we're averaging 30 fps in fact, the frame rate doesn't really move from 30 FPS. It's quite an enjoyable experience, even at 1920 by 1080. Once again, the Ryzen 5 1600 putting in all the work here. And yeah, it looks good. Vice City still, even in 2020. It's a very nostalgic game, this. I have a feeling, actually, that we might have the frame rate limiter on. So I'm going to just jump into the settings again and see if we can turn that off. And yeah, the frame rate limiter is on here. If we turn it off, we're getting around 
40, 50 FPS, which is a nice improvement over the limited 30, but you can still expect some stutter. Overall, should you do this? Absolutely not. Like I said before, I hope the viewer who asked this question is satisfied with the outcome because I certainly am not, but I wasn't expecting much more to be honest, and I'm sure you guys weren't either, but thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Please install your graphics card drivers, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.